ta'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim wa bishrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli wa biyassir wa la tu'assir wa tamim bil khayr wa bika nasta'in ya fattah ya fattah ya fattah sadaqallahu al-azim wa sadaqa rasuluhu al-nabiyyul karimul amin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given me and you the ability and tawfiq to participate in this gathering. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering a source of guidance for all of us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering a means of our entry into Jannah, inshaAllah. Today, I want to share with all of you a few insights, a few reflections from a very beautiful ayah of Surah Yusuf. And this is the ayah that I recited in the beginning of my speech, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Who said that I want to start by telling you something that you and I already know. Every single human being has an ideal. Every single human being has a purpose in life, whether they say it or not. For the Muslims, we will talk about that later, inshallah, but even for the people who are not Muslims, who don't have any kind of religion, there are some people who only have a religion because their family pass it to them. Otherwise, they don't care about it themselves. They just want to live their life. They don't care about their religion. But even for such people, there is some kind of ideal that they want to work towards. For some people, all they want at the end of their life, what success is to them is, maybe I will have a house, that's success for them. Maybe if I have this amount of money before I die, then that means I have success. Maybe if I get married to this one or that one, then that means I have success. Every single human being has a different definition of success. For some students, the only thought about success that they have is that I want to finish my degree. I want to finish my master's degree. I want to finish my PhD. And if I can finish that, then I'm successful because I have accomplished something that I was looking for. You know, some of you are employees. And the only thing that you're looking forward to is your promotion. So if I can just become the manager or the director or the senior vice president of my company, then I'm successful because I have accomplished something. What I'm trying to say is that every single human being has something that they want, something that they want to work towards. There is some matulub to them. And this is something that is shared across humanity. You don't have to be a Muslim to have that. We all have that irrespective of our religion. And within Islam, it's okay. It's not like Islam forbade you or stopped you from wanting things. It's not haram for you to want a house. It's not evil for you to want nicer clothes, to have a better family, to want a better job, to have a little bit of more income, to have a little bit of more saving at the end of the year. These things are not evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not stop you or me from wanting these things, but I want to take this discussion a step further. I'm conscious of the fact that I'm speaking at a masjid at Ikra Academy, and in many cases I'm speaking to the people who are already religious people. They're practicing Muslims. And I chose this ayah of Surah Yusuf on purpose. And I hope and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will be able to clarify this to all of you today, inshallah. See, in our religion, we can live the minimal requirement. The minimal requirement. Which could be for a Muslim is that, you know, you stay away from haram things. You stay away from really, really bad things. And you just make sure that you do your fara'id. You do things that you have to do. Just take care of these things and you are okay. You can live your life. You can do whatever you want to do. Just stay away from haram and fulfill your obligation. At least you meet the minimum requirements of your religion. 
and then nobody will question you. Nobody can come to you and say that, no, 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 you are not doing enough. You have to do more. If you want to go into Jannah, then you have to do more. If you want to be saved from the fire of Jahannam, then you can just do the minimum. You have to do more. I won't argue that with you, at least. I don't know about other scholars. I don't know about other students of knowledge, other imams, other khatibs. But I won't argue that with you. If you meet the minimum requirements, that's okay. You can do whatever you want to do. But what I want to tell you is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put some people. Allah gave some people extra blessings, extra opportunities. And I would consider all of you people, especially who, is sitting, who are sitting in a masjid, listening to a Jummah khutbah, I would consider all of you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you an opportunity. Allah opened a door for all of you that is not open for many other people. You know, some of you people are students. And you go to your universities and you get free education in Scotland. You get free education. Some of you people are employees. And mashallah, you have got really nice jobs. Some of you people own your own businesses. So all of us have been blessed with many, many opportunities. But most importantly, all of us who are sitting here, we are blessed with an opportunity to sit in a masjid in a non-Muslim country. Think about that. In a non-Muslim country. Maybe you don't realize what it means. But I've been living here in this country for seven years now. And I've come from a Muslim country. I can tell you the difference. Don't take your Islam for granted. Don't take your religion and faith for, for granted. I have met many Muslims in this city who lost Islam in one generation. Many Muslims who lost Islam in two generations. There are families, entire families. Recently I was coming back, just yesterday, a day ago, I was coming back from Glasgow and I saw this pizza, halal pizza place. You know, there are many halal places in Glasgow. So I saw this halal pizza place and I stopped there. And the guy who runs that place, he's from Edinburgh. And because I live in Edinburgh, we started talking. And then this guy told me that he is from Albania. And he said, actually, my grandmother is Muslim. My grandfather and my grandmother, they are Muslims. So I said, what about you? You own a halal pizza place. So what about you? He said, I don't do this stuff anymore. I don't care about it anymore. Within two generations, they lost it altogether. They don't even see themselves as Muslims anymore. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. But there is something in a society that influences everything around you to not support Islam, to further Islam. But you people are blessed, mashallah. You people are blessed that you are living in a city where there are many Muslims around you. Where Islam is relatively easier for you. It's relatively accessible for you. You can come into the masjid and you can hear the azan. The call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is open to all of you in the masjid. Do you know that there are Muslims who live their entire life in this country and they didn't get to hear azan even once because they never come to the masjid. The only time they are in masjid is when people, other people are praying their salatul janazah. That's the only time when they are in the masjid. What I'm trying to say is that you people are blessed. It's a huge ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have Muslims around you. Islam is relatively easier. Islam is relatively accessible. But you know what happens when Islam becomes easy, right? You know what happens. We don't realize what a huge ni'mah of Allah it is. What a huge blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is. We don't realize it. It becomes an everyday thing for us. It's just like every week, so many people are here in Jummah Ummu. So it becomes a normal thing. It's not a big deal. But if you go to some other cities of Scotland, I've been to Cooper. You know how far Cooper is from here? From Edinburgh? Half an hour. I've been to Cooper. I delivered a lecture there. Do you know how many people were sitting there in front of me? Only six people. They have more halal takeaways in that city than those Muslims. Six people. Because they are the only religious and practicing Muslims in that community. 
in that society. And they don't have any musalla, they don't have any masjid, so they arrange a gathering in a church. You people are blessed, alhamdulillah, you have masajid. You realize what a huge name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is to have Muslims around you, to have the support of Islam around you. You people are blessed. I am blessed. So now I want to go back from where I started. There are some people who are just happy doing the minimum. They're happy doing the minimum. But I'm here to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you extra blessings. He has given you extra opportunities. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects great things from you and me. He does not expect a minimum from us. If you're just doing the minimum, that's fine. I don't hate you. And I'm not going to yell at you, but I'm here to tell you that you can do a lot better. And I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects a lot more from us because he has blessed us so much. He has blessed us so much. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described this religion of Islam for us in this ayah of Surah Yusuf. Now listen to this Surah Yusuf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his prophet, Qul, O prophet of Allah, hazihi sabili, tell your followers, tell your people, hazihi sabili, this is my path. And notice here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell your people, haza deeni, this is my religion. No. This is my religion, this is my truth, this is my book, this is my deen. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not describe Islam with any other language except that this is a path. And most of you people know that path is like a journey. So Islam itself in this ayah is described as a journey. But what does that mean? You know, in a journey, you have to make progress. Even if you are taking one step a day, it means that you are more closer to your destination than you were a day before or a step before, right or wrong? In a journey, you are constantly making progress. So Prophet Muhammad said in this ayah that your religion and my religion, our Islam is a journey. You know what it means? It means I am supposed to do something more for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than what I did yesterday. And then I'm supposed to do more tomorrow. And then I'm supposed to do more tomorrow. I'm supposed to go further. This deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should become more of a reality to me today than it was yesterday. And I should have something to do with that. I should serve, I should further the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should become the servant of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it means. Hazihi sabi. You know, I, I know that I've spent very few years in this country and I've spent a very little time traveling in the Muslim areas of this country. But I can tell you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's not a single Muslim community in this country, a single Muslim area, a single Muslim place in this country which does not need da'wah. There is not a single community in this country where there are Muslims and all of those Muslims are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't need any kind of advice. There are so many Muslims in this country and the only thing that is left of Islam is their name. That's it. That's all that is left. They don't care about their salah. They don't care about their businesses. They don't care about halal and haram. They don't care about what is the source of their money, what kind of income they have. They don't. Whose job is to invite all of them? Whose job is to care about them? Whose job is to bring them back to La ilaha illallah? Whose job is to make them realize that our religion, our Islam is beautiful? Whose job? You know, it's, it's such an irony that nowadays when we think about da'wah, we think about non-Muslims. Buddhists need da'wah. Hindus need da'wah. Christians need da'wah. Atheists need da'wah. But we are living in strange times, my brothers and sisters in Islam. The people who need the da'wah most today are Muslims themselves. We need da'wah. We need concern of other Muslims. And those of you are sitting, I can see a lot of young people are sitting here. The young people who are about to graduate. You should know that, whether you like it or not. You are going to be the ambassadors of Islam to your community, whether you like it or not. When you go and work at a company, you will be the ambassador of Islam at that company. When you go and work in a department of the government, you will be the ambassador of Islam in that department of the government. You are going to have to learn to live Islam at the highest level, not the minimum, not the minimum, highest level. Highest level. 
You young people should have some love and concern for your countries, for your cities, for your communities. And when you see people going away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should hurt you in your heart. It should hurt you. You should say to yourself, what can I do to make Islam a deeper reality in my society? What can I do to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What should I do? And then you should do it. You shouldn't just say, Alhamdulillah, there are so many people already coming in the Jummah prayer. Alhamdulillah, no. Does this mean that everybody's heart is clean? Does this mean that we don't need any reminder? Is that what it means? That so many people are coming for Jummah prayers? Or are there evils in our society? Are there young people in our society who are turning towards drugs? Are there young people in our society who have no purpose in their life? All they do is play video games and watch movies and do the Snapchat and that's it. And go to sleep. It's not only a Snapchat, right? No, it's Instagram as well. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. It used to be a Facebook, but now Facebook is an older generation. And you ask them for a purpose, by the way. You ask these young people for a purpose and they say, I want to graduate and I want to get a job. Is that the goal of your life? Get a job? That's it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us such higher goals. Such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. You should think about where I'm going to work. And I know those of you who are about to graduate, you're always thinking where I'm going to go to work, to get a job, where I'm going to live, how much money am I going to make, when my parents will allow me to get married. Don't be so keen on getting married. The people who are already married, go and consult them first. But these are the kind of questions that you are thinking all the time. But let me add one more question to your list. How am I going to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with my education? And with my career. How I will be of some service. You know, mashallah, some of you young people, I come from Pakistan, so I can tell you that. You people have the honor and the privilege from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah made an opportunity for all of you to go to universities and get education for free. Get education for free. I did my MPhil here in this country and I can't do my PhD yet because it's not free for me. I paid 12,000 pounds a year for my master's degree. 12,000 pounds. And I'm a Paki Mulana. I don't own any businesses here. I don't own any property here. You get free education. Such an honor, such a privilege. Some of you are getting bachelor's degree. Some of you are getting master's degree. Some of you are pursuing your PhD. But I want to remind myself and all of you that what we are studying is not just an academic subject. It's not an academic subject. In Islam, the concept of ilm, the concept of education is that when you study it, you study it so that you can learn, you can serve everything that you learn. You study and then you ask yourself, how can I benefit with this? With this, how can I benefit something else or someone else? How can, with this, with this education, how can I help my society? How can I help my masajid? How can I help my young people? How can I help my women? How can I help my children? You have to think like this all the time. All the time. How am I going to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These are the people of highest caliber. You don't just think about getting a job. These are the people of highest caliber. And I expect that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the blessing of education to the people that Allah sees them qualified, that they are capable of higher services. They are capable of higher services. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told us, he chose us. We are right people for the job, he chose us. But I want to give you an example and I want you to think about it. Just think about that example. Somebody gets a good job. He gets a good, after an interview, he gets a good job. This is an honor, right? Obviously, you do not get a good job if you're not qualified unless your uncle works in that department, right? If you're working in a Desi department and your uncle works in that department, then you get a job. But normally speaking, you do not get a good job unless you pass the interview. You have the experience. You can demonstrate the skills. <clears throat> then only you get a good job. But after you get a good job, you don't do your job. You got a good job, but you show up to work every day late. You got a good job, but you don't finish your projects. You got a good job, but you sit behind your desk doing nothing, wasting your time. 
what will happen? You're going to lose that job. Somebody else will come and do it for you. You cannot keep that job even if you are qualified because you are not doing your job. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told us which tabakum I've chosen, you have selected, you people are qualified. You have the qualification, you say la ilaha illallah, but does that mean that we are doing our job? Qualification alone is not enough. If we don't do our job, if we don't make ourselves concerned, if we don't care about it, then what will happen? In tatawallaw, yastabdil qawman ghayrakum, thumma la yakoonu amsalakum. Allah says, if you turn away from me, I will replace you with the people other than yourself. Thumma la yakoonu amsalakum, and they won't be like you people. They won't be as lazy as you people are. We have to become the people of service. Every single one of us who is sitting here in this audience, we have something to offer to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to contribute to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to build that in your mind. Build that in your mind. I know some of you will say, Mulana, I don't have enough knowledge. I'm not an alim. I'm not a khatib. I'm not a scholar. I'm not a da'i. How can I serve? I cannot serve. You don't have to be an alim to serve. You don't have to be a khatib to serve. You don't have to be a da'i to serve. This is not the only service that needs to be provided. Are there any people in your family who are doing wrong things? Are there people in your family who are doing unfair dealings? They don't give inheritance? They don't give the meher? Are they doing such things? Then you should speak about them in the family. It's your job. Who else is going to do that? Are you and your business partner, are you cheating other people in your store, in your shop? Are you doing unfair dealings? And then you're like, oh, the government doesn't know. Allah knows. The government doesn't know. Allah knows. Whose job is to fix that? Whose responsibility is to fix that? It's your job. It's your responsibility. That's how you're going to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how you're going to serve Allah. Become responsible people to Allah. This is sabil. Qul hazihi sabili. Become responsible people. Civilized citizen in your society. You know nowadays the world and the media, they are trying to push this idea that the people who follow Islam, they are violent people. They are not civilized. They do not know how to run in this world. They don't know what they are doing. These ideas are being floated in the western media all the time. And we can make all the speeches that we want. We can do all the speeches that we want. Proof does not come from the speeches. It doesn't. Proof comes when we have the most just societies. When we have the best economic practices. When we have the most fairest dealings. When we have most unity and love among each other. And we don't divide each other in the name of Islam and in the name of moon sighting and in the name of Eid. When we have the most unity and love among each other. When we deal with our non-Muslim neighbors, with our non-Muslim friends in the best possible manner and we don't park our cars in their spaces. That's the proof. That's the proof that everything on the TV is a lie. Other than that, you can do all the speeches you want. Give all the pamphlets. Give all the copies of the Quran. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. The world does not want to hear about Islam anymore. It wants to see Islam. It needs to see Islam. Who is going to show them Islam if not the Muslim? And especially the practicing religious Muslim who come and offer their Jummah prayers in the masjid? It is such a shame. Last Jummah, an elderly lady from an old home across the street, there is an old home. An elderly lady waited outside of our main door of Iqra Masjid throughout the whole Jummah prayer, waiting for that one person who parked in their disabled area and blocked all the cars. SubhanAllah. Is this the Islam we are going to show them? What kind of Islam? You should not even come for the Jummah prayer if you are causing inconvenience for your neighbors. Don't come for the Jummah prayers. I'm telling you, I'm giving you this fatwa and I will be responsible on the Day of Judgment. If you cannot park your cars in appropriate places, don't come for the Jummah prayers in Ikraikar. Don't. What have been we doing? Every single Jummah there is a complaint. Every single Jummah there is a complaint. What kind of Islam are we going to show to other people? Is this a proof that we are good Muslims? Is this a proof that we are serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
You don't have to be an alim to park your car in an appropriate place. You don't have to be a da'i da to park your car in an appropriate place. Is if there is one thing that I want to inculcate in all of you, if Allah allows me, based on this one ayah, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي is that we cannot be happy and we cannot be satisfied with how the things are at the moment. You cannot say, Alhamdulillah, at least we are Muslims, we are coming to the masjid. You cannot say that. You cannot be satisfied with that. You have to make progress. This is what is sabil. This is what is journey. In a journey, you are constantly making progress. You are constantly making things better. You have to look at your communities. You have to look at your neighborhood. And you have to ask yourself, what can be better? What can I do to improve my neighborhood? What can I do to make this place a better place for other people? You find that and you do that. You work towards that. This is قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ My time is almost over, but it's a beautiful ayah. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانُ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ If Allah allows me, inshallah, I will finish that ayah in my next jummah. The only thing that I try to explain in the first part of this ayah, this ayah is from Surah Yusuf. It's ayah number 108, I believe, towards the end of Surah Yusuf. Go back home and read that ayah on your own. And inshallah, then you will understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from all of us. Like I said before, you can lift the minimum requirement. Nobody is going to hate you. Nobody is going to question you because you are already meeting the minimum requirement of your religion. But we people are blessed people. Allah has given us opportunities. Allah has given us blessings. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects greater things from us. He does not expect minimum for us. May I, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in this one. Yeah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us in the hereafter. Brothers, I request you to perform this one.